Hello and welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Tutoria. This is using the Diamond Coast map that is available with the vanilla version of City Skylines. And this is going to be a series where I introduce game mechanics and how I play the game and how I make realistic cities. I'm going to try to keep this series very organized and predictable. We're going to start out playing vanilla and then we're going to introduce each of the DLCs in the order I recommend them in my DLC recommendation episode linked above. Then we'll introduce the content creator packs and some basic mods. And for each of these topics, we're going to spend two episodes each for a total of 24 episodes. The episodes will be guided by population, with each episode gaining approximately 5,000 citizens. So we're starting out just vanilla, nothing else. And we have a highway ramp, and that's, that's it. And that's what you get when you start the game. Now, a lot of players will make the mistake of overbuilding their infrastructure and keeping the clock running. So the very first thing we're gonna do, pause the clock and think about our interchange. So when you start out, you don't really have much available to you, and that is until you build something. So you build a road and immediately you have things unlocking for you. So a lot of players will be mystified at this point in the game. They'll start to think a whole heck of a lot about how to make a really elaborate interchange. And I'm here to tell you that you shouldn't do that. Uh, in fact, you really should uh, be very cautious with building roads in general. So I'm starting out with $70,000, and that's not very much money. So rather than creating an elaborate inter interchange, all I'm doing is creating a collector road. This is this four lane road that will be used to carry our traffic out of the community and carry major traffic through the community, creating that road and really nothing else. Now, I wanna think about where I want this road to go. You could decide there's a point that you wanna reach, or you could just decide, I just, I just need to get somewhere. So I'm gonna take this road out a little ways, not too far, and stop there. From this point in time, you might be tempted to go ahead and use your two lane roads, but I'm gonna tell you not, not to do that. Not yet, we'll get there. Right now we wanna use dirt roads. If you look at the price, the two lane road is $40 or 40 cents a cell with an upkeep of 32 cents a week. I'm sorry, $40 a cell and 32 cents a week upkeep. When you go over to your dirt roads, you see it's exactly half. And right now money is in short supply. So we're gonna build off this road. Again, not getting elaborate, and that'll be the start of our city. So when I'm coming off a collector, a four lane road, or one of these roads that, that has added width, I like to count out 11, because that's gonna make sure that I have the maximum density possible. And there's a couple things to know. So this right here is 10 tiles. And you could count tiles all you want if, you, if, that, if that's your thing. The other thing you could do is use the money to be your guide. So I see that this 10 tiles is $200. If I wanted to go out and do 15, I know that that's 300, but it's also where that line shows up. So I love 15. I think it's an interesting block size and a lot of the unique buildings fit with that. And I go 11 back from this main road so that I get the maximum density possible. So I'm gonna go and mirror this and then we'll come back to the video. So a couple of things to know at this point in the game. Uh, you might see as I bring this down, so I get my 300, bring it in, and then I get this line, this dashed line. That is a road guide line. And when you go over here to toggle snapping, you have a number of options. So I have everything selected right now. I don't need to have everything selected. I have a lot of freedom if I don't. If I pick angle, now it snaps to my 90. If I pick road length, it snaps to that grid line. If I snap the grid, it perfectly conforms to the grid, which can be really useful. And then road guidelines will conform to roads. So it'll make sure that I'm lining up with roads in a way that will make sure that I'm not off, off skew when I'm connecting roads. So to start out, I'm creating just a simple grid because my goal is not to have a fancy city, it's to have a functional city. So I've gotten really close to this highway. And what you'll see is that the game will add in traffic signals 
at any point when a local road connects with a collector. So the local roads being the dirt roads, the collector being this four lane road. So I'm gonna go up here to my info views and I can do a couple of things. So I can look here at my traffic routes and then go over to junctions and I can actually toggle my traffic lights then. But if I go over to adjust roads first, I select the road and I make it a priority road, rather than needing to change all of these and add stop signs, I can actually just go through and click on these and it'll add stop signs to the roads that are not the priority road, giving free flow right here. You do have to be careful on the highways, on your interchange, because it will add a stop sign there as well. We don't want that. So we've got a basic roadway network. And you'll notice it's a little off skew, and that's okay. You don't need to get perfect with this. Uh, this most likely, if I wanted to make this perfect, let's, let's say that we do. I think what happened is that it caught a road guideline, and that road guideline led to some issues. And you can see it right there. It's catching this angle. So I could turn off road guidelines, focus on my money, and hopefully it'll straighten it out. Unfortunately, it is not. So another tip, I could go out here, add this outside. It's perfect there. Sometimes you can fix it. It's just not going to work. And this can be very discouraging. I don't want it to be for you. It's not that big of a deal. Roads are imperfect and they don't need to be perfect. It's completely fine. So when you're starting out with a city, you need a couple of things. You need power, you need water, and you need to be able to, to get rid of your wastewater. So those are the basic components of a city. So the very first thing we're gonna do is place this drain pipe. And I wanna look at my water flow. And what I can see is that the water's coming down this river and flowing out towards what appears to be the ocean. So I'm going to place this as far away from the city as possible because the last thing I want to do is have a, a water inlet and inadvertently suck in some wastewater. So now that I have this, cities does not differentiate between wastewater and clean fresh water, so we're not going to either. Now we're going to place some water pipes and we're going to place those underneath our roads because that's where they belong. Water pipes are supposed to be under roads because when they're under roads, they don't conflict with buildings. So I'm gonna pull this water pipe out and connect it directly up with that inlet right there. So the water system is covered. We don't have power yet. So we have some options. When we start the game, we can get a coal power plant. We need to import all of our coal then. We can have a wind turbine and that's it. <laughs> so, um, it's important to take a look at these and understand what you are going to need. So this right here is only four mega megawatts of power. This is 40. So I will need, or this is eight rather, uh, between zero and eight. So if I were to place one of these, the amount of power I generate is gonna be dependent upon where I place it. And you can see that it's giving me a range. So right here in this, we got a mid-tone blue, I'll get six megawatts of power. If I bring it over here to the darker, it'll get to eight, or actually just seven. And I'm not really seeing any places where I get eight except for along the coast. There's this ring around it. That is the area where it would create noise that would be disruptive to residential users. So these are things to think about when you're planning the future of your city. Conversely, I could place a coal power plant and I would need to import coal to make this work. Now there's a range here and that's both noise and pollution. So that's something important to keep in mind. So if I were to place the coal plant, which one, that's what I think I'm gonna go with. I don't necessarily love coal plants, but I do think that they are a benefit at the start of the game. I just wanna be cognizant of that and place that as far away from any residential uses as possible. So I know that within this cone, I need to place zero residential uses. So. We have road names on. And you can see that right here, this is given, given the name of Wardway automatically. So we know that Wardway is really our dividing line for pollution. I'm just gonna complete this block and we'll keep that in mind. So at this point, we need power lines. We need those to connect up to our water system. Otherwise, it will not operate appropriately. So we are going to cross our highway and then go diagonally across. 
There's no magic here. I just want to make the shortest connection that I can to be as frugal as I can with these water with with, with our power system. Because you can see we're already using a significant amount of our budget. And from here, I just want to start to place some of my uses. So along a main road like this, commercial uses are really desired. And the, one of the primary reasons for that is commercial uses generally need a lot of visibility to be successful. So we're gonna place our commercial uses there and our residential uses behind them. And this will be beneficial for us in a couple of ways. First, because we place these away from this, this main road, that traffic noise isn't going to impact our residential users. And uh, the second thing is our commercial uses are gonna have all of that visibility and, and thrive because of that. I'm gonna zone some additional residential uses and try to avoid zoning within that roadway right of way so I don't have to take down houses in the future. That would be eminent domain and that's challenging <laughs> to say the least. So at this point, we should have a connection that's good enough to get our city going. So we're going to start running it. The other thing we could do is place some industrial uses. These won't develop for a little while, but we still want to have them anyway. And you'll see right away, start to see some development occurring. And you might be thinking, what about police coverage? What about fire coverage? What about landfills? What about healthcare? We don't need to worry about that until the population milestones are reached. So if you click on this padlock here, you'll get your milestones. And until we get to 500 population, we don't need to worry about garbage, healthcare, education, none of that. The city's not going to think about that in the slightest bit, so you shouldn't either. What you're worried about right now is balancing the budget. So this economy tab right here will help you do that. So there's a couple things that I'm noticing right off the bat. We are definitely overproducing our power and our water. I'm gonna turn those down for the time being. What this is gonna do is allow me to balance my budget. And I can see that it's not a problem because if I click into my electricity view or my water view, I am completely fine. Things are okay. Now I am noticing that for some reason, this looks like it has an issue. So does this. So let's take a look at our issue. For some reason, our power was not getting over here. And you can see that now these are lit up and they're pumping as they should. So down here is our RCI meter. So this that's residential, commercial, and industrial. So those are our basic needs for our city. And the higher the bar, the more the need. So right now it's saying that we have a low need for residential, we have absolutely no demand for commercial and we have medium demand for industrial. So if we want to balance our budget, we're going to need to take care of those needs. So we're going to extend our industrial district out. We don't have water over here and that's a problem. So let's take care of that. And then we'll zone some additional industrial. So one thing I want you to take note of is where I've placed the industrial. It is very close to this highway entrance. Industrial has one of the highest trip generation rates. So we wanna make sure that we are not overloading our highway uh, or our main roads in our city by having our industrial out here, for instance. If we were to do that, we can guarantee that we're gonna see all of this industrial traffic heading down our main street. And while we're thinking about it, why don't we rename this street? Right now it's Smithson Street. We can name that main street. We know that this is our main drag. So they'll go up Mason Drive and go to Smithson Street to leave the community. This is signalized, they must have missed that. So we'll take care of that now. We're in a pretty good spot. You can see that we've balanced our budget and because we lowered our power and water, we're gonna wanna keep an eye on that. You can already see that our power, we have a production of 10 megawatts and a consumption of five. That's because it's industrial, it takes a lot of power. So our residential demand is creeping up and I zoned a whole bunch of residential over here, but it's not connecting. The primary reason for this is that it's outside of the range of our power lines. No need to worry, we will get that fixed. Let's zone just a bit more. We know that we're gonna have things over here. We also know that it's within our service area where we already have utilities, so why not take advantage of that? 
And then I'm gonna run a temporary power line right here. And it's close enough for the game to be happy with it. In just this short period of time, we already have a city with 300 residents. And we are well on our way to reaching some of our thresholds. All we have to do is wait. So what we're gonna do for the time being as our commercial demand creeps up and our residential continues to pick up, we're gonna speed things up for just a moment. And with that, we have reached Little Hamlet, and that opens up a number of opportunities to us and responsibilities. So we now have the ability to increase or decrease our taxes, take out loans. We also have new services such as garbage, healthcare, and education, all of which are now required. So we're gonna to need to take care of those. So let's leave this, our speed goes down, and they give us some money, which is wonderful. In fact, I believe that we receive a few thousand dollars for that. And that's a way to help us along our way. So I'm going to extend our grid out, another 10 tiles, and then our 15, and we will add a landfill. This is not the most imaginative layout, but it doesn't matter. That is not the point right now. The point is slow, steady expansion. So now I can place a clinic, and I want you to think about something when you're placing the clinic. So I'm gonna slow this down for a second, I'll pause it. Some people will think I'm gonna place this on the collector. It's the right way, the right place to place it. It is not. It is the absolute wrong place to place it. You're gonna be loading onto that collector with this use then. Don't wanna do that. The other thing is we have a median through here, which means that if you are trying to access the hospital, you either need to take a U-turn or loop around. So you're gonna create traffic problems. So instead of loading it right there, we're gonna load it off our local road. And with that, they'll be able to come down and get in here and even go out the back road if they want to. Same will be true for our elementary school. And you can see that our coverage is great on that collector, but it's the exact same if you put it on the local road. So don't put it on the collector. Going to extend our grid out again, we'll go even further. Now we'll get rid of some of these power lines that are no longer necessary. We're gonna add some commercial uses here because they're not as uh, sensitive to some of the pollution caused by the industrial area. And we're already within our coverage area, so we don't even need to extend our utilities. So let's just resume. I do wanna make sure that we add a school. We're gonna add that off, looks like Leighton Smith Way, and that'll give us sufficient coverage. So green means excellent coverage, and this gray means it's not so great, but it will still work. People will still be able to get there, so we don't need to fret. You can see that our city is now rapidly expanding now that we're providing adequate city services. We need additional industrial. So I noticed that we have a really nice area over here, and I don't want to impact that. So as we move over, I'm going to say that this is a protected area that we are unable to disturb. And this has two effects. First, it'll create a more interesting... Uh, it'll, it'll create a more interesting geography for our city. So that is one benefit. The other thing is, in the future, if we want to turn this into a park or something else, we have not impacted our ability to do so. I just wanted to extend that out and make this something a little more unique and fitting of the area. So I'm gonna go ahead and add additional industrial uses. And you'll notice that there's this little icon right there with water. That means that we are no longer meeting our water availability needs. Now, before we fret, let's go into our budget. We created this problem and we can solve it. We just need to increase our budget. So let's get everything back to 100%. Generally, this is what I like to do. We have a positive budget number, and I don't want to forget about this. Inadvertently destroy our city by killing our citizens or building excess infrastructure because we forgot that our budget is turned down. The other thing we can do now is turn up our taxes if we want. So these percentages, I'm not really sure what they mean. I'll be completely blunt with you. Uh, it's not like uh, in, in a real city where you have a mill rate, but what I do know is that I can turn this up to 12 without upsetting the citizens all that much. You go higher than 12 and you get abandonment issues. So we're gonna turn that up. 
then we need to make sure we have water pipes in this new area. There we go. Underneath our road where they belong. So our industrial area now has this thoroughfare right here that will connect directly up to our highway and our collector, bringing goods to our commercial district and making them available for export. And we're in a good spot. We're gonna turn the speed up. In the beginning of the game, feel free to do that. You're gonna to need to continue to expand. So I wanna stop expanding towards the industrial area and start expanding towards the water. And we're in an interesting spot where we can basically expand without giving it a ton of thought because we have an easy, predictable grid. And there were a lot of cities developed on grid, grids like this. And one of the main reasons that they were is how easy they are to develop and predictable they are for development. But I don't want you to think about your grid and think I'm going to only zone one type of use in here we don't have the ability to zone mixed uses in city skylines, at least vertically, but we can add horizontal mixed use. So what that means is adding little nodes of neighborhood activity. So think of a barber shop, coffee shop, those sorts of things. We can add little nodes of activity and we should. Now I'm gonna try to evenly space this going every other road for our water system. Now we can eliminate a bit of this excess infrastructure, and that's going to save us money. We don't want more infrastructure than we need. So our water system still has power, and the reason that it still has power is we're now drawing power from our buildings. This is not the way it would work in reality. You cannot draw power from a transmission line, but you can in the game, so take advantage. So we have reached Worthy Village. We've unlocked another tile. We have districts, policies, more loans, specializations, and service policies. We also have police and fire department, which are now gonna be responsibilities in unique buildings. So we can have agriculture and forestry and pilot up some, you know, some really interesting policies like power usage, water usage, and smoke detector distribution. We also have these new buildings. For unique buildings, you don't get a lot. In fact, I don't know that we get any. So I guess we would have the ability to have a winter market and a Chirp X launch site. We aren't meeting the requirements just yet. So unique buildings are under the unique buildings tab. We can click through and see that nothing is unlocked for us. But if you hover over, you can figure out what you would need. Winter market needs a 5,000 population. Chirp X, 42. And in here, it's development. We need development or money be able to unlock these. So interestingly, the thing we're closest to unlocking is the Statue of Wealth, most likely. That's gonna be the easiest one for us to reach because some of these other ones, like the Statue of Industry or the Lazaret Plaza, you're either gonna to need to destroy your city or overdevelop certain land uses to accommodate that need. So we have industrial need and that's about it. We can improve things by adding our city services. So we click in here to our fire department, for instance, and look at our firehouse, we can see that everything is red. Now what that means is that we have low coverage. I'm gonna add a block out and add in a firehouse and a police department. Sorry, a police station. Don't ever worry about adding these uses. They add value to your city, they improve the land values, and as a result, they're always good to place. Same thing with parks. So I've gone into here and clicked on my districts. I wanna create some districts. Right now, they're not gonna do a lot, but in the future, they will. And what they do for now is allow me to name things and look at values of specific areas. And they snap to roads, so it makes it easy to paint them. Clicking on the right mouse button will allow you to delete the district and, and, and calm it down if you've gone beyond where you want it to be. They don't need to be perfect. So if you click out of there, you can click on the district name, rename it if you'd like. So this is the Highland Park Industrial Park, a little redundant. <laughs> and then you can define policies for this district. Right now we don't have a lot, but we could have 
uh, power utilization, water utilization, smoke detector distribution, those sorts of things. You gotta really pay attention to these. I would really put myself in a bad spot if I had five cents upkeep per building every week. Same thing with water and power utilization. So I'm gonna avoid those. If I click out of the district, I can make it a citywide policy. I also want to avoid that. So I'm gonna extend my services out here. And now we're in a good spot. I believe that we've placed all of the assets available to us. That's important. So at this point, we just need to respond to city needs and our city needs more residents. And it needs more industrial. So I think industrial is what we're gonna focus on for a moment. So you'll notice that the road was curving when I try to attach it. And I don't love that. Now a way that I can eliminate that is to eliminate that road segment and then send the road up. From there, I can make some of my roadway connections. Now it's not letting me make, make nice connections, but what I can do is click on my freeform road tool, go up, and bring that in at a 90. Now it's nice and clean. What I've done is create a really nice roadway network throughout here. So I don't love Linden Way and the way that it's developing. I wanna maintain my grid. I'll just bring that through. And now it's orderly and I like it. And this is also beneficial when you're planning your water system. It allows you to better follow the roads, which as I've mentioned is where we want our water system to go. I'm gonna clean this up. I want my water system to be predictable and easy to understand, me in the future. So there we go. And I'm gonna extend my grid up. And we're out of money, which is an issue. So at this point, I know that I've gone a bit too far, a little extreme on my spending. And that can happen when you get too into designing your roadway network. Now generally, I like to respond to the needs, but I was pre-planning. Nothing wrong with a little bit of planning. And I'm making the money back. I could have taken out a loan, but I'm patient. Nothing wrong with waiting a little bit to get where you need to go. Now we have a nice grid and we have low demand for basically everything. We've got available land that's already zoned. So at this point we could wait. We could also examine what we're doing we can see that our landfill utilization is good. Fire coverage, it's okay. Crime rate's low. We're doing okay with our elementary coverage. Healthcare is good. Death care is not so good. We don't have the availability to place it now. So we're just kind of waiting. So I'm gonna speed this up again. And you can see that our next milestone's already almost unlocked. Little padlock has a pie chart underneath it. And that tells us when we're gonna reach our next milestone. Our next milestone is Tiny Town, and it will unlock a number of things for us. We will just sit tight a second and wait for that to unlock. And there we are. So this gives us landscaping, parks and plazas, level two unique buildings, which is great, some new policies, it gives us canals, New buildings like public libraries, high schools, and then all of the parks that uh, are, are unlocked. So this is an excellent addition to the community. It also gives us some additional money to build some of these buildings, which is great because we are in dire need of funding. So at this point, I want to go into rapid expansion mode. So we're just going to continue to expand our grid and do so in a logical and orderly way. Now, all of this land could be developed if we were to choose to do so. Again, I am gonna develop this. I'm going to add in a row of commercial to buffer from some of those noxious externalities of the industrial uses. And then I'm gonna add in some neighborhood activity centers little pockets of commercial, pizzerias, coffee shops, places where you could walk to do some things. 
It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to, to work. But I also want to think about our parks now. So we have a number of parks. We have small park, small playground. This is one that I'd love to have next to my elementary schools. We might use some eminent domain to place this next to our school. Fits in well. The kids need a place to play. There's a little playground on the school, but I like a bigger one. Feels like it fits more. So we can also place a high school and we are absolutely going to create a little bit of a campus here, a school campus. And then we have our parks, the rest of our parks buildings, which we no longer have funding for. And those are in multiple tabs. So if you sign up for a Paradox account, you get the Paradox Plaza. That's nice to have. And this plaza with trees, those are great in commercial areas. You also get these other parks in which you have a basketball court. I would love to place one of these near the school. We're going to speed this up and really get things booming. So what you'll notice is that when I place these parks, the color of the buildings changes. And that denotes our entertainment value, which directly correlates to our happiness and our land values, which are low right now. So let's place this and see what it does to our land value and our happiness. Everyone loves this. What they don't love is that we don't have enough power. So I don't want to build another power plant and I can't afford it. But I can go in here and crank up the budget or I can also implement that policy, but that might have an impact on the amount of tax collections that we have. We'll just crank that up. And you can see that now we, our consumption is just below our production. Not ideal. What it would be ideal would be to have 19,000 to place another power plant. Why don't we just do that now? We'll take out a loan from the Silver Sunset Bank. We'll have to repay that over 52 weeks, that's a year, at a 5% interest rate. We could pay that back early if we want. We'll place another power plant over here. We know that the pollution will not impact anyone. And that will give us the opportunity to zone a whole bunch. And we're gonna take advantage. So we could be really deliberate with our zoning. We could go and we could say, we want three here and two here and one here and four here. You could do that if you want a specific type of building. And you could certainly go into your landscaping tools and once these develop, make unique building patterns by adding landscape in between. We're not gonna do that, but you certainly could. We also have the ability to make paths, so we could make a path connection through here and allow people to walk. You could even upgrade or downgrade these paths so they fit in a little bit better. But I'm going to avoid that. That's not what we're trying to do right now. So let's just keep keep developing. So I'm going through and making sure that I've placed all of my city services. And at this point, I think we have everything covered except for our public library. And I think I want to add one. We'll add it about a block away from the high school off Pearl Drive, which is now really turning into an important street. And I want to remember that, so I'm going to upgrade this one road. A lot of our educational facilities are located near this road. Now I'm going to go into my parks again. Whoops. And inadvertently place a basketball court. Rather than delete that, I'm going to move it. So I click on it again, and I can move it over. Now this does not get its zoning back, so I'm going to add that back in. What I really wanted to do was go into my parks and see if I could place any. So I have this small park here, and I know that we need to improve our land values. So I don't want to interrupt our roadway network, so I'm going to place that away from where it would interrupt that network. And there we go. Nice connection. Bring this over, and we've reached Boomtown. So now we have public transit, level three buildings. We can unlock another area. We have the ore specialization, recycling, recreational use, highways, toll booths, death care, elder care, and child care, and an advanced wind turbine. So a lot of good stuff. So it'll slow us down again. And I noticed that I missed a roadway connection here. We are going to live with that. We're not going to use eminent domain to fix that. It's okay. We do need to place death care now. The moment we unlock something like this, it now becomes a need. So I want to extend this road up. We'll go our 300, and then we'll add in death care. 
and that will serve the city well. We also have elder care and child health care. Now this is important because if we go up to our health tab, you can see that our health care is not that great, 69%. And when we look at our child care, uh, which is child health, we're at 73, elder care 61. So I want to focus on the elder care to start. And we'll be a little bit morbid and place them right across from the cemetery. <laughs> i check my water to make sure these are covered. They are. We are fine. We'll extend our water down to our new neighborhood. We know that our road's going to go here so we can extend our pipes to the end of the road. Now what you'll notice here is when I go into my paint bucket tool, it'll go around natural features it thinks that we should preserve. That rock feature is one thing it thinks is valuable, so we'll keep it. So let's speed things up again. Take a look at our happiness. Happiness is improving as are our values. That's because we're placing parks. So let's go and take a look at some larger parks. I love this park with trees. It's bigger. What I like even more is this, if we take a look, so that is, that is the asset I was thinking of. We're gonna use this to break up the space. We'll have a unique block in here. Go up 300 and you might think that's really awkward the way it's sitting there well one of the nice things about these parks are that you can add on roads and make connections distance does have to be long enough and it can't go through trees but you can make connections in a strategic way and even here i want to make this but road length is my problem so i'll turn it off I'll turn off grid and i'll keep angle on that will allow me to make that connection. Perfect. We'll have some, or some residential uses around here. So we have a commercial demand that is now unmet. So why don't we add some more commercial uses here? And then I want to use my highways to upgrade this little two lane chunk that we have here. Now this is useful for a couple of reasons. First, it gives a loop back around it makes our road network make more sense. I like it. So significant industrial demand and we are going to solve that need. So let's extend this back, turn all of our guides back on. Our water coverage is good there. Now we can zone all of this. Perfect. So I'm curious about my education pipeline. I wanna see if we have enough elementary schools. We do not. All of the citizens enter the city without an education and unless you give it to them, they won't have it. So I'll place that here, which will create some zoning issues because we took out a power line. So we'll fix that up again. I like to place amenities near schools. Why don't we have this cool bouncy castle? The kids will love it. Put that right across the street. Unfortunately, the kids will have to walk across the street to get to it. That will improve our land values. And now I can actually go into land values and click on the districts. They'll tell me it's actually $37 uh, per square meter in Orchard Square, and in Chestnut it's 31. A big reason for that is, first of all, the district size, and second of all, uh, the amenities we have available. Let's create some more neighborhood districts. Now these districts could be any size you want for illustrative purposes. I am just combining them all, or I'm making them approximately the same size so that we can compare the values between districts with services and districts without them and industrial districts. Now our industrial district is not worth a lot. Our districts that are close to services have higher land values. You can see that Maple Heights right here, which has the high school, this basketball court, and a library close by, it's doing pretty well. So our elementary coverage is still teetering. We have some capacity, but not much. Our high school is fine. We do not have a university, even though we have eligible students. We'll be able to unlock universities at a population of approximately 7,500. So we could do a couple of things here. We could specialize some industry and 
that's certainly something that's valuable. So if we wanted to do that, there's something that we should do. We should go to our natural resources tab. When we go in here, we can see where our natural resources are. So you could plan your whole city around this. Right here, we have two things going for us. We have oil and forestry. Over here, some forestry. This is fertile land. And we could have farms there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you can create a forestry district if you wanted to. You could place trees. You cannot create the other districts. So if we wanted an oil industry, that has to go right here. And this resource will deplete unless you turn unlimited ore and oil on. Same thing with the ore that we see over here that will deplete over time. And if you're running on three times speed like I am right now, it'll deplete very fast. So let's say we wanted to create a farming district over here. We're going to make it twice as large as our other districts just because I think that it should be longer. What we're going to do is paint a new district over here. Then we're going to go into our policies or our specializations rather. Click on that and we can select a farming industry specialization. And then we paint our district and we won't get any of those polluting factories do want to back this off. Let's have some commercial to add a buffer so we don't get lots of pollution. And then we'll run water up here to ensure that everyone has adequate coverage. Now we can look back at our natural resources and we know that this is not all covered. It will still develop. You'll get some other sorts of buildings outside of the fertile grounds. It'll still work they'll be processing plants rather than the actual production buildings. At least that's my understanding of it. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. So I'm going to extend our main street out. At this point, we have the funding to do it. Generally, roads are not extended unless there's development occurring that would spur that on, but we can deviate from reality. We're also having some issues with water and sewage treatment, and this is a major problem, particularly sewage. That will lead to death. So we're going to add a second sewage pipe, place that right on the existing water line. We'll do the exact same thing with our water. Now I do want to make sure that our power is connected. We deleted some lines inadvertently. And the last thing we want to do is have these disconnect. And we can visually inspect this to make sure it's working. Pouring plenty of pollution out in the water. I guess that's good. <laughs> Our water, though, did not connect. Oh, that's because I placed a sewage pipe. That is a devastating mistake to make. So I've made this mistake. I'm really hoping I don't suck the pollution up, but I hope it goes downstream. If I suck this up, I am going to poison the citizens. We're also having pop problems with our power. We're gonna add yet another power plant, but not before we reach busy town. So this gives us planning policies, unique four buildings, leisure and tourism, the oil industry, public transport policies, and more roads, including roads with trees. It's wonderful. We will take a look at those soon. We're also getting an oil power plant, fire station, police headquarters, and tropical garden, and a big hospital. So I'm gonna slow this down, place our new power plant, and this is where we're gonna end for the day but I do want to make sure that the city is working before we just call it. You can see now we're way overproducing, which is fine. I want to look here at our pollution. You can see that the pollution is now no longer near our water, so we should be okay there. And if we look, water and sewage is perfectly adequate. Our electricity is beyond adequate. We could lower that if we wanted it. We should take a look to make sure we're not overproducing. We are. We'll lower that back to 100. And we're in a good spot. We're ending this in a place I am very comfortable. The city is growing well, and I am happy. So we are going to call this. I hope that you enjoyed this series. Let me know in the comments if you like this series idea. Hit a, please hit the, the thumbs up button if you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. Hit the notification bell if you want to know when I release the next video in the series and all other videos. I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters who support me while I create this content. 
I appreciate them and I appreciate you. Your likes, shares, and subscribes help grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with a brief city tour like I always do, and I'll start that right now.